وقضينا إلى بني إسرائيل في الكتاب لا تفسدون في الأرض مرتين ولا تعلون علوا كبيرا. It was it was ordained that Banu Israel will commit this awesome facade in the Holy Land on two occasions. This is the first one. Making halal what Allah had made haram and changing the word of Allah. And then he sent an army which worshipped the sun and the moon and the stars, the Babylonian army. And this army attacked that state of Israel defeated it, destroyed it, destroyed the masjid and took Banu Israel back to Babylon as slaves. But wait a minute, the land had been given to them. How come they are now expelled from the land? Allah did it. It seems as though the land was not given to them unconditionally. It seems very clear that the land was given to them conditionally, that there were conditions attached and that they had violated those divine conditions. And when you divine, when you, when you uh, uh, violate the divine condition, even the President of the United States can't help you. Now let us see whether our theory or our hypothesis is correct. Let us go to Surah Al-Anbiya where Allah speaks and He says وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِسُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ And we sent it down in the Psalms of David and that came after we had sent it down in the Zikr which is the Torah which came to Moses alayhi salam. What did we send now? And al arda yarisuha ibadi as-salihun. That only those who are my servants and therefore who follow the religion of the Imam who I pointed the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam, which is Islam. Only those who are my servants and who are righteous in their conduct. Only they will inherit the Holy Land. Some people have difficulties in understanding what is righteousness. <laughs> so maybe this lecture has come as an opportune moment for us to teach them what is righteousness. It is not righteousness <laughs> that you turn your faces to this way or to that way. That's not righteousness. Righteousness is in your conduct. And if you drive your people out of their homes and out of the land in which they lived for no just cause other than they are Muslims, you drive them out and then you deny them for 50 long years. You deny them the right to return. That is not righteousness. Allah says in Surah Al-Hajj, أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ لَخَبِيرًا الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقِّ إِلَّا أَنْ يَكُولُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ That when a people are driven out of their homes and out of the land in which they live, for no just cause other than they are Muslims. Allah gives them permission to wage war. Allah gives them permission to wage war in order to respond to this oppression. And Allah says that when you wage war, Allah is sufficient to come to your help so that you will eventually be victorious. And so one of the conditions for inheritance of the Holy Land is that you must be a servant of Allah, and therefore following the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Number two, condition for inheritance of the Holy Land is that you must be righteous 
in your conduct, not righteousness as defined by the Security Council of the UN. <laughs> righteousness as defined by the one who created all of mankind. Because they violated these conditions, they were thrown out of the Holy Land. But when we go to the Torah, we find that someone changed the word of Allah on this subject. And you'll find this quote in my book, The Religion of Abraham and the State of Israel. You'll also find it, of course, in this book. It is not because of righteousness that the Lord your God has given you this good land to inherit it. No. No. Not because of righteousness. Because you are a stiff-necked people. That is what is in the Torah. Implication of this statement is that whether you are righteous or you are not, the land is still yours. <laughs> whether you follow the religion of Abraham or you abandon it, the land is still yours. That is the implication. That is false. And so now they are in Babylon, you remember? Weeping by the rivers of Babylon. And then Allah sent prophets to them because they're still living as a homogeneous community. Among the prophets who were sent to them is of course the famous prophet Daniel and then there is Isaiah. And these prophets communicate a divine promise. A divine promise. Listen carefully to this promise because this is at the heart of Jerusalem in the Quran. The promise is still there in the Torah, you can read it, in the, in, the, in the Jewish scriptures. That Allah was going to send a prophet who will be known as the Messiah, Al-Masih. And when the Messiah comes, he will rule the world from the throne of David, alayhi salam. And therefore, the state of Israel. And therefore, Jerusalem, which is the capital city. And so when the Messiah comes, the Messiah will rule the world from Jerusalem. And secondly, that when the Messiah rules the world from Jerusalem, his rule will be eternal. And therefore, this will be the end of history. Not what Francis Fukuyama wrote. <laughs> This is the end of history, when the Messiah comes. Now if you're in Babylon, and you get this promise from Allah, then the inescapable implications, you don't need a PhD from MIT to deduce this, is number one, in order for the Messiah to rule the world from Jerusalem, the first thing that the Messiah will do when he comes, or will have to do, would be number one, he'll have to liberate the Holy Land. Having liberated the Holy Land of Babylonian rule, the second thing that he'll have to do would be to bring the Israelite people back to the Holy Land. The third thing that he'll have to do would be to restore the state of Israel. The fourth thing he'll have to do would be to ensure that that state of Israel becomes once again the ruling state of the world, once again. <coughs> and so the golden age will come back. And then the Messiah can rule the world from Jerusalem. And so while they're weeping by the rivers of Babylon, they're waiting for that day when the Holy Land would be liberated.